My name is Stephanie Sikic with the Surfrider Foundation. I'm with my colleague, Joe Giever. Uh, we represent the 20,000 members that we have here in California. Surfrider purposefully decided not to get on the RSG when this process started because we had one thing in mind. We wanted to work outside of the process and do outreach education and everything we could to, within our own right with our members. Um, our membership is extremely diverse. In fact, it actually represents a little bit of the RSG. We're fishers, we're surfers, we're divers, we're elected officials, we're scientists, we're attorneys, etc. Because our membership is so diverse, we wanted, the onus is on us to find common ground. So we did that in two ways. We surveyed our members and our non-members, and then we met and had individual meetings with environmentalists and fishermen, and several of you are here today, so thank you for taking the time to meet with us. Joe's going to talk about the outreach that we did, and I'm going to briefly talk about the survey that we did. Last December, we commissioned a survey to basically poll our members and non-members. 536 people took the survey. 400 of them took it online, and we personally interviewed 125 people at several beaches, fishing piers, community events, recreational shops, one surf competition, and one surfing derby. Most of the respondents consider themselves beachgoers. A large percentage were surfers and swimmers. 30% were recreational fishermen, and 28% were divers. Because there are so many questions, we're only going to cover two that are really critical. The first question was, please list areas that you want MPAs, and over 88% of our respondents answered that question. The next question was, please tell us where you do not want MPAs, and only 35% of our respondents answered that question. In general, there was a trend towards stronger protection and larger reserves. But very surprisingly, we found support for protection in areas that we had originally predicted, predicted to be red flags, and that includes Point Loma, La Jolla, Palos Verdes, Naples, and Laguna Beach. The, people, the areas that people do not want to see as marine protected areas are actually pretty commonsensical. The top 10 answers um, will be given to you in a memo, but for the sake of brevity, it's poor habitat, polluted areas, marinas, harbors, piers, Point Loma, specifically the outfall area, the jetty, and the pier, La Jolla, specifically north of Wind and Sea, and Devereaux. What's interesting is that Point Loma and, and La Jolla were equally listed in areas where they want protection and where they don't want protection. But the catch was is that people who filled out that part of the survey were extremely specific with their answers. And so that level of specificity helped us see where we could find common ground. Joe can talk about that in a little bit as well. This objective data that we did coincides with a lot of conversations that we had with environmentalists and fishermen. Um, and again, Joe will talk about that. I think as we look long term, we've all been in these rooms for the past nine months, and you know the words that we keep saying to each other are coming up in the general public, and here they are again. Enforcement, balanced, sound science, better regulations and slot limits, and accessible fishing. It was very exciting for us to see members focus on science and the long-term productivity of marine, of marine reserves. And again, we'll follow up with a memo. Joe wants to share some examples with you briefly. Thank you. Um, um, whoops. Our direct outreach uh, idea was to speak one-on-one -on -one with a diverse group to generate some common ground. I'll offer a couple of simple examples of uh, creativity and flexibility from those conversations, two really important components. I'll start with Santa Monica Bay. There's a lot of interest and controversy in protecting Point Doom and the north side of Palos Verdes. What's unique here is that the entire bay is regulated as a recreational fishing zone already. We were told by some fishermen that they could support reserves designated on PB and Point Doom if displaced lobster and crab fishing could be made up for by allowing some trapping in areas of the bay where it's currently prohibited. The reserves will obviously provide extremely important benefits to non-consumptive divers and other non-extractive users, but importantly, the example shows that through creativity and flexibility by all parties, including the department, maybe it may be possible to develop cross-interest for reserves on the headlands. Next is the San Diego area. La Jolla ranks high in representative habitat and biological diversity, as well as fishing popularity. We found support for a reserve in La Jolla given adjustments to the boundaries. The idea was a reserve from somewhere south of Wind and Sea to near Crystal Pier, possibly pulling the line in from the three-mile limit. We were told this would avoid displacement of kayakers and the CPFV fleet. 
We also heard constructive ideas for compromise in the Laguna area, an idea for protecting Naples Reef while allowing some limited diving at Devro, and new and creative ideas for a reserve in Carlsbad that may capture a diversity of habitat otherwise unavailable in North San Diego. We hope those that we spoke with will relay these ideas to the RSG. I'll try and wrap up just by saying that I want to really thank the fishermen who took, uh, to reached out to us and, and took the time to um, share these creative ideas. We think that th these are just examples, they're not proposals, and that if you take these examples and try and apply them coastwide and, and on the islands, that um, there, are, there are more opportunities available to, for finding cross-interests than, than what we see now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joey. Thanks, my name is Chad Nelson. I'm with the Surfrider Foundation. Um, we were disappointed with the proposals that came out of round two. Um, and while we understand that proposition, proposal C may have been a non-starter for many, we're disappointed with the lack of diversity that we've seen. And we heard earlier today the consequences of that. Um, we, uh, we have been working hard and striving to find cross-interest support. And uh, as you heard from Joe and Stephanie earlier today, um, out of our 20,000 California members, we found that a large number of them fish, and they also support large marine reserves that meet the science and spacing guidelines more than the preferred. Um, at the same time, we've had a lot of constructive dialogue with fishermen, and we feel like there are alternatives out there that can um, increase conservation and gain cross-interest support. We want to make it clear that uh, those proposals need to do more than meet the minimum and more than meet the proposals that are on the table to gain that support from the Surfrider Foundation. So we hopeful, hopeful we, we're hopeful that we can continue to work with these both sides and uh, find something that meets those goals. Thanks.